Hey guys, welcome to the math base. The roundest knight at King Arthur's table was Sir Comference. He ate too much pie. This is pie. This is also pie. The difference should be obvious. One of them floats in midair, while the other has legs and can run away. But let's put away our food and talk about maths. Pi actually comes from the Greek word peripheria, which means periphery. It has many synonyms, three of which are boundary, perimeter, and circumference. In the field of maths, the Greek word was abbreviated to its first letter, pi. It has something to do with the value of 3.14 and going around a circle. Let's find out what that is by using a circle of our own making. Grab something large, flat, and round, like a pizza tray, a biscuit lid, a cooking pan cover, or a mug, and draw a circle around it. I'm using a biscuit lid because I like biscuits. And pie. Now grab some string and cut a few pieces to match the circle's width or diameter. Each string represents one diameter. Question. If you wrap them around the circle, how many would you need? Two? Three? If you're doing this right, you'll find it uses about three pieces and a bit. Or more precisely, 3.14 pieces. You can try this out with other sizes and you will reach the same conclusion. So its circumference is always 3.14 times the diameter. And that is pi. So pi is a scaling factor of some kind. It gives you an idea of the size. It's like saying a Mega Mac is a double Big Mac. Well, a circumference is a pi diameter. Okay, let's see how this applies to two common ideas in geometry. Circumference is the length around a circle, right? So as we already know, taking pi and multiplying the diameter of the circle gives us the circumference. So the formula is pi times d. But we usually use radius to work this out, and diameter is always double the radius. So we can rewrite the formula as pi times 2r, more commonly written as 2 pi r. So, okay, we can see how this formula came about from our string activity, but what about circle area? Its formula is pi r squared, right? To make sense of this, we'll need to reshape it into a rectangle. Now, if I had a pizza, this would be a lot more fun, but all I have is paper, so I'll make a paper pizza. If you want to try this out for yourself, draw a circle on paper, split it into eight equal parts, and cut out the slices. Arrange them in an alternating fashion like this. It's not the best rectangle, but for the sake of progress, let's pretend it works for now. The straight end on the last slice was the radius of the circle. So the height of our weird rectangle can be r. As for the base of this rectangle, it's kinda curvy, right? These curves come from half our circle, so the base is just half the circumference. In general, our circumference is 2 pi r, so half of that is just pi r, meaning the base is pi r. Now, the area of a rectangle is base times height, so for our wacky paper pizza rectangle, pi r times r gives us pi r squared. Done! I know this is not very accurate, but if you did this with smaller pieces, you would have more of them to arrange together, and it will look more like a rectangle compared to this one. In the end, it's not so much about the size, right? It's about the idea of size. So, in summary, pi is used for various things in maths. Aside from geometry, it's very commonly used for radians, since degrees are seldom used for angles in VCE. So we'll look at that in another video. Link will be in the description when it's out. So I hope this video has helped. If it has, please like the video so that others can be helped by it.
If you have any questions or suggestions for new videos, please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you know when the next video comes in. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.